Welcome back to Give Your Pixie Wings Part 2. I'm your host Rob Hirschfeld and this is the deep dive part where we go from how Pixie worked, Part 1, uh, and what is Kickstart and Preseed, to variants of how to make it faster, how to improve the performance, and just how to get creative with how all these pieces fit together. So let's dive in. So the first thing you'll, you'll want to know is how do we actually simplify this basic process? Because there's a lot of steps going on in how these things work. Um, and what we've done and we've found incredible success with is using a in-memory OS, we call it Sledgehammer, uh, that is designed to boot pretty much everywhere. Today is based on CentOS uh, 7. We're migrating to CentOS 8, and with CentOS changing, probably not going to change much the way we build. It's a very special curated version. It's really its own OS uh, based on CentOS, so we can use all of the great CentOS libraries and support and things like that. And it is highly, highly optimized, but it boots quickly. It runs on everything. It collects deep inventory because it has all the tooling that you want. We use it for our RAID BIOS configuration, uh, scrubbing systems, validating systems. It's a full OS and we have full control, which it makes it really powerful. But the nice thing about this is that once it's completely set, then we are good to go and then we can start our guided installation. It gives us a real working spot in the system. And because it's running on the system itself, it's incredibly easy for us to parallelize. And we can do thousands of machines in parallel with this. Uh, the boot times are really fast. Um, it doesn't have to install a lot of stuff. This is a great way to just get things going. And we've even built like Kubernetes installs that use uh, Sledgehammer as the base OS because it's just an OS. You have to mount the disks and attach the storage to make that work, which is actually not a big deal. Uh, it's also the basis for our image-based deployment that we will get to right now. So image-based deployment is much, much faster than uh, doing a standard kickstart pre-seed type image. And let me explain how it works. So you, you bootstart, you, you kick, you, you uh, kickstart pre-seed into a sledgehammer, some RAM only OS, very small footprint. We manage that whole process. Then you take a compressed file, tar, gzip, uh, something like that, write it directly to the disks after you have some automation that sets the drive partitions and gets things ready and installs your, your kernel bootloader on those disks. So we have workflows that do all that. We write that disk image to the hard disks, and then we reboot and it goes directly to that image. It is much faster because it skips all of those installation and checks and download components and things like that. You produce an image, copies the image, it's highly compressed, and you're done. Um, it's also very resilient and secure because this whole process is going on inside of a controlled environment instead of using a kickstart, pre-seed, pixie, all that stuff, which actually is pre the security environments all getting set up. So very, very helpful uh, to improve security also in how these systems go. The challenge on this, though, is that you actually have to build a good image. And the, we find with our customers, using an image is really not very hard. Building an image takes a lot of learning and, and practice and things like that. Once you get it down, it's, it's pretty easy to automate, but you have to get the drivers installed right. You have to have some prerequisites met. You have to be able to launch that image and get it running. Once again, it's something we've helped a lot of customers with and something you can totally do. Uh, and you'll find it's a really productive process, very cloud-like when you get all this stuff going. The other thing that uh, we find works really well is if you wanted to really invest heavily in immutable provisioning, which means that you're basically uh, installing an in-memory image every time you boot, sort of like Sledgehammer, but used in production. Um, that's really great. You can attach the disks and then load containers. Um, people are used to something called CoreOS. There's Atomic. There's a whole bunch of variants of that. Um, Rancher OS, K3 OS. Um, the challenge here is that in those environments, if you're using a containerized version, then you're going to be sort of stuck with whatever container operational pieces you get. Sledgehammer is nice because it's actually a real OS. And the thing to be cautious with in this is super handy to get very consistent. If you reboot the machine, you get a completely fresh image. Um, but when you do that, you've made your provisioning system HA, meaning highly available. Your data center will not survive a restart if the provisioning system isn't available and up and running and able to 
serve out images across your whole fleet. And so while this sounds really great, uh, we don't see it happening as much because there are a lot of operational competencies that you have to have to make this stuff go. If you can do it and you have a really consistent fleet um, or you want to be able to reset and resync things really quickly, this is an amazing way to get going. Um, and if you're using uh, digital rebar with sledgehammer, you're pretty close to being there anyway. So now, those are the basics. Let's talk about some really advanced thinking, some, some really cutting-edge stuff for uh, provisioning. ESXi, VMware. Um, that is not typical because inside of VMware you have a very restricted environment. Their version of Kickstart is called Weasel, uh, which is pretty much Kickstart. I wish it was that simple, but once you're in that environment, you still have to do post-provisioning that isn't comprehended in Weasel, especially in version 7 and some of the more advanced pieces. And to do that, you have to run in a very restricted environment where you don't have a full CLI, you don't have all the command line features, you don't have a lot of permissions. So to do that, you have to run additional scripts to get the system going. Um, and what we've done is we've actually taken a version of our agent, uh, in this case it's called the Python Digital uh, DR, DRP uh, CLI, or DRPY, as we like to call it, DRPY. And in that agent, it is able to talk to Digital Rebar, pull down workflows, uh, and run a limited set of workflows, or run Python scripts. And we have worked with VMware to get that signed so that it is secure. And when we do that, we can then do the uh, secure boot which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the other thing that we can do that's really important is you can't complete all of the provisioning operations for VMware inside of that uh, agent. You actually have to do external operations using one of several VMware tools. For that, we do context switching. So what you'll do is in a workflow, you will get to points where you're like, I have to run uh, Go VC or some other uh, VMware CLI, switch to that, run it from the server, talking to the API, externally and then bounce potentially back into Derpy or something else like that. Um, a lot of what we've been able to do is sort of mix and match these pieces and that's what provisioning looks like. So things start to get challenging with VMware. Uh, the good news for you is that we have done all that work and we have pretty much baked in a standard set of workflows that boot VMware on pretty much all the hardware that customers have been throwing at us. So if you want to make VMware simpler, we've, we've already done all this hard work. You just get to layer in your special sauce. Oniboot, um, open network install environment. Um, Oniboot is used for switches and it's different than Pixie in that it's designed to write the firmware as the, as the boot process. So, uh, normal Pixie boot is really designed to create a bootstrapper, load a, um, one OS to transition to other OSs. Oni's job is to actually write firmware. It's a switch provisioning system. So you don't get an execution environment that you can run in. You, you can download new firmware to run your switch and then run a script using a, um, a script embedded uh, information, some startup scripts in your DHCP information or in the Oni uh, descriptions. But it's, it's really not sort of bootstrapping as it will. It's really patching this, the script. Uh, and so for a while we got really excited about Oni. Um, it doesn't really provide the same level of controls that we like to see when we're managing servers. Um, but if you're going to provision switches, you're going to need it, and Digital Rebar supports it out of the out of the system. Kernel exec is something that uh, I've gotten really excited about. It's it's been harder to go into practice, and in some cases, it's not as well supported in a lot of operating systems people care about. But it's worth mentioning. So kexec happens inside of your kernel anyway, when you go from one kernel to another. In this case, um, you literally don't need to uh, repost the machine, put it back through a BIOS, RAID, all those configuration settings. What you get to do here is you get to um, reset the machine, you know, basically switch kernel to kernel um, by using kexec and saying, hey, I have a new kernel, start it over here. Um, it's really what happens when you're doing a normal boot provision and you can control it. Um, Sledgehammer will do this, uh, and you can turn on this feature, and it will automatically chain back into kexec. You don't need to re-provision re the system, like reboot re it, um, repost it, wait. That can take 10 minutes or longer on some of these systems. So you can literally jump OS to OS. Um, 
I guess I was really excited about this uh, because it can be so much faster. The range of utility we've seen in the field is actually smaller than I was I, I'd hoped. Um, but it does create really optimized systems where you can go from the OS you're in back to Sledgehammer, do some work, go back to the, a different OS or a reset OS, um, and potentially save yourself um, lots and lots of time without having to reboot. And uh, if you didn't weren't aware of this, reboots are actually high risk. High risk servers will run for a long time, and rebooting puts them under stress that can expose uh, flaws. Um, not saying you shouldn't reboot. Reboot all the time. Um, just be aware that sometimes your 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 cycling the system is going to create more stress on the system. Um, not like not burning up your server stress, but it's that's a place where servers can attempt to reboot and not come back. So, trusted platform module, Secure Boot. Secure Boot is amazing. Every single person should be using it. Turn it on. We have it baked in. It's a licensed feature for us. Um, and basically what happens is every step of this boot provision process, your server has a chip in it called Trusted Platform Module. Most servers do. And Basically, what it does is if the OS that's being loaded is not signed with a key that matches something in the TPM, the TPM will stop your system, which could be bad if you're worried about your systems being stopped. It could be good if somebody's trying to compromise your system with a bad, with a compromised OS. <coughs> so, learn once. And um, so, the idea here is that we are able to control every step of this process as uh, trusted signed hardware or uh, so operating systems and modules. And so this is a really important way to, to improve things. If you turn this on, it's on, and you better be ready to boot provision all your systems or whatever that system henceforward using that process. Um, you can go back into firmware and turn it off, but it's, you know, you're secure or you're not secure. You don't get to choose. Um, so everything that you send to that server had better be assigned OS, um, including, this is important for VMware, all the modules inside of that. So if you have signed modules, that's why we signed our agent in uh, VMware, then it will actually remain in trusted mode. You start getting unsigned components, all OS is going to say, whoa, I'm not signed, and you're not going to be able to um, get the, the signed verification of that system, and you're, you all the VMs in VMware, all the VMs, will not be considered uh, trusted. Uh, most people operate that way. It's not the end of the world, but it's much better to be able to enable trusted security for your whole chain of operation. So not hard to do, but you have to be aware of what it takes to make all those pieces work. Oh, attached media booting or BMC booting. Um, We've seen this one get pretty interest, uh, some interest. This is, uh, the only way that ironic, OpenStack ironic does things, um, which is pretty limiting, but, uh, let me explain how it works. Uh, Digital Rebar, of course, does also handle this type of scenario. So the idea here is that when you start your machine, uh, the out of band management, uh, baseboard management controller, uh, some of them have a way to attach a ISO to that system and look, it'll look like, like a CD-ROM booting, exactly like a CD-ROM booting. And that install media then runs through an install process. If you're thinking about it like a regular install or a live things, those in, expect to download packages and apps just like a normal kickstart. So what you're really doing is you're saving the Pixie component for this. You're not saving your OS install, um, but it can be handy. One thing to note, it is really slow. Um, these systems are not fast. Streaming the media across them is not fast. Um, and you're always at risk that that media is going to break. Um, what we've done to make that better is we've made our sledgehammer bootloader, just the sledgehammer bootloader in the BMC. You can create the install media, boot, skip Pixie, go back to DHCP, and then download all the pieces from the provisioner. Um, this will avoid... Um, a Pixie boot process and move you straight into a more secure media and avoid TFTP boot. Um, but still, um, you know, it's better, but you're not really gaining that much. So we haven't had as much enthusiasm for that. What we have seen more interest in is actually building a dynamic sledgehammer with injected media, uh, your IP address and name and things like that into that sledgehammer dynamically. 
Um, when you do this, this creates a really interesting opportunity where each machine can get its own digital rebar driven sledgehammer instance dynamically built as, as it's needed. And then that can actually go all the way through the installation process. Um, and then you can do image based deployments from that. And since Sledgehammer doesn't really have any external dependencies, this can be a very good way to install systems where you are not allowed to use DHCP. Um, so super powerful from that perspective. Oh, good. You're still here. I almost forgot. I wanted to tell you something about Raspberry Pis and Pixie booting Raspberry Pis because that is a bizarre topic and I promised I'd say something about it. We've been working on something called edgelab.digital, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi uh, automation environment under $500. It uses digital rebar, so it could actually boot anything, but we figured out how to make Pixie booting Raspberry Pis simple and repeatable. There is firmware for the Pis that you can use that will let them be Pixie booted, but like I was saying, protocols for Pixie are variant. And so to make it work, it's not quite what you would expect. So to make, so uh, we've built this into digital rebar. You could replicate this with your own Pixie server. In our subnets definition, we build one for Edge Lab. It builds it automatically, but you actually have to include additional options in the system that uh, translate into a string that tells it where to find the proper Pixie boot files. That in itself is not enough. There actually is a drop through chain of um, file resolutions that need to be included. And so when we built our Sledgehammer install, which is what gets, gets going, there's actually a Raspberry Pi variant set. You'll see it RPI, where we have a hacked up version of Sledgehammer that uses uh, kernels that work on the Pi and then have the additional image deployments and uh, options for making Raspberry Pi Pixie boot work. It does work. You can sledgehammer boot, uh, sorry, Pixie boot, uh, immutable memory boot, Raspberry Pis. It is uh, reliable. It is a great way to run Pis. It reduces wear and, <laughs> and updates of your SD cards. And I strongly, strongly recommend checking it out. Um, if you use Pis, it will save you a lot of heartburn and time. I hope this extra segment was helpful. Thanks. I hope that was helpful with Raspberry Pis. Overall, this whole conversation is something that we have over and over with people, and we would love to talk to you in more depth about Digital Rebar and how it solves all these provisioning things, or have you come and try and stump us? We deal with so many things out of Digital Rebar as a provisioning abstraction layer. Um, we, we help people who thought it was impossible to do provisioning, and, and we will take that as a challenge. So uh, please, if you have questions, ask us. If this was helpful, please let us know. We are always trying to refine and improve how we do um, infrastructure's code automation. Thank you.